I want to take a minute right now and I want to welcome everybody who's joining us. They're just now joining us online, so they have no idea the anointing they're stepping into. Let me let you know that we have prepared the atmosphere. The Spirit of God is in this place. And where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is there in the midst of them. Right in the middle between that video screen, that phone screen, right between you and me, the presence of God is there within reach. Continue to pray with your spirit. Something's going to happen in you at some point in the service. You may feel something moving in you. You may, may feel warmth. You may feel heat. You may feel the Spirit of God leaping on the inside of you. I want you to know this altar is open to you and available to you just to worship him and to bless him and to receive from him. The enemy is no longer here. You, you are in a free space right now without obstruction, without hindrance. Hallelujah. Glory be to his name forever. Tabernacles. What does it have to do with the last days? What does it have to do with the moment that we're in right now? I want you to go to Isaiah 55, a very unusual, very peculiar passage of Scripture. In Isaiah chapter 55, there has never been a time like this. There are moments when things change, and then there are times when everything changes. You are at a season right now when everything is changing. Everything is shifting. Nothing is outside of God's reach. His arm is not shortened that he cannot deliver. He can reach you right where you are. I don't care how long you've had diabetes. I don't care how dire the diagnosis is. I don't care how divided your family is. I don't care how wayward your children are. I got a prophetic word for you. The prodigals are coming home. Come on, anybody know how to receive a word? Anybody know how to, how to Bartimaeus a word? I said the prodigals are coming home. You may be a prodigal watching right now. You may be a prodigal of someone sitting in this room or a prodigal of someone watching online. I need you to know right now you have been released to return. The lies of the enemy, the blinders, the deception is broken. Now you can come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Jesus is calling. He said, behold, I stand at the door. Ah. Lord, don't let us miss our moment. Bartimaeus, he cried out because he recognized, this is my moment. Look at two or three people around you and say, don't miss your moment. It's your moment. And you know what the disciples' response were to Bartimaeus? Shh. Don't trouble the master. The master can't be troubled. You cannot weary him with your request. You cannot present something before him that is too grand. You cannot bring something before him that is too small. The only thing that could offend him is that you don't bring it at all. God is not challenged by your enormous request, nor is he insulted by your smallest of requests. He is insulted by your refusal to make an appeal before heaven. Bartimaeus felt in his spirit this was his moment. And I want to get Jesus' attention in this moment. Say, this is my moment. This day... This is your moment. Last week we talked about the significance of Jesus standing at the door and knocking. What is that door? It is the delete. Ten commandments in the Old Testament, you remember? Is this, is this refreshing your memory? Ten commandments that we have laid out for us. There are three that deal with God. There, are, there is one that deals with an ordinance, and then there are six that deal with man. Six is the number of man, three the number of divine perfection. So you have three, and then you have six. 
You have God and then you have man. And in between them, you have the fourth commandment. It is the door. Everybody say door. door. Behold, I stand at the What is the door? The Shabbat of God. The Sabbath of God. The celebration of God. Do you recognize that God has ordained celebrations? They're called Moedim. It'll just make you feel smart. Why don't you say Moedim? Moedim. Moedim communicates, and I wrote this down before I came in the building, an appointment for an encounter that gives calls for celebration. (laughs) <laughs> an appointment for an encounter that gives cause for celebration. God set an appointment to meet with you because he knows if he don't set an appointment, he don't ever get to talk to you. So he set an appointment to meet you seven times a year. Once every, well, apart from the once every seven days, seven times a year, the seven feast of God. Three are called the returning feasts. You with me? Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. The other feasts, you could do whatever you wanted, wherever you wanted. Basically, you could celebrate it anywhere. But when you're dealing with the returning feast, say returning feasts. When you're dealing with the returning feast, you could not stay where you were. You had to come to his house. That's why tonight we're gathering at 6 p.m. to come into his house, and he will meet us here. He will be here before we get here. And he said, come into my house. Let every man come. Let no one come empty-handed. David said, I refuse to offer God that which costs me nothing. Let no one come empty-handed. Let everyone come And let them come and celebrate me. Why did the children of Israel go into captivity? Why did they go into bondage? Because they refused the Shabbat of God. Study it in scripture. You'll find out that it'll be true. They went into captivity because he stood at the door. And they did not open. And so they went into captivity. How much captivity have we gone into because we have not opened the door? What happens when you open a door? Something you could not see is now seen. Something you could not have access to, you now have access to. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door. I stand at the door and knock, and if you will open to me, I will reveal myself to you. I will come in with you, and I will sup with you. Blessed be the name of God. It's a divine moment of opportunity. In fact, are you in Isaiah 55? Isaiah 55. Does anybody have an amplified Bible just out of curiosity in the room? Anybody? Somebody pull up for me Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 on your phone the, on, for the amplified Bible. We'll get to that here in a moment. Isaiah 55. Are you praying in the Holy Ghost at least underneath your breath? Whoo! The presence of God is in this place. The presence of God is in this place. Let us know where you're watching from so that we can stand in faith with you right there where you are. So we can believe God with you. Uh, Drew, Evan, I don't know if you've seen where folks are watching from so that we can kind of fix our faith with theirs. I know we've got visitors from Fort Bragg with us today. Blessed be the name of God. Huh? And Raleigh's in the house. Yeah. Connecticut. Mississippi. California. A. Ireland. Come on, let's celebrate Ireland. Kenya. India is with us. In the name of Jesus, we speak a shining light to break out in India. Right now, the persecution will only fuel the fire of revival in India. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everybody say returning feasts. So I'm not going to get into it right now, but in Malachi chapter number three, God says, return to me and I will return to you. Wherein shall we return? And he says in tithes and offerings, what does that have to do with anything? It's referring to the returning feasts of God. Come and meet me as I've commanded And he's speaking there in Malachi of the offering. If you go through Malachi, they're offering him. It's not that they're not giving their tithes and offerings. They are. 
but they're giving lame offerings. I wonder if you looked up and down at your neighbor, just look at him and say, what's your offering like this morning? Is it lame? <laughs> that has nothing to do with the amount. That has to do with the obedience. They were bringing lame offerings, and God said, bring that to your governor and see how he likes it. Why is it you honor your governors and your parents and other authorities greater than you honor me? So at the returning feast that were commanded, there was an offering commanded to be combined with it. I'm not receiving an offering at this moment. I'm just letting you know that's where your heart is. So you're, when your prayer gets connected, I'm getting, I'm, getting, I'm getting very frustrated with that spirit of mammon that has so intimidated preachers and deceived believers that we can no longer receive an offering anymore with any form of importance lest we get lumped into some sort of crazy caricature of a televangelist somewhere that built somebody out of their last penny. I'm not backing up because some preacher somewhere did something they shouldn't do. We're going to preach the word of God. We're going to preach the gospel. And I'm here to tell you, your money belongs to him. You'll have a prophetic move of God, a prophetic service. And in the middle of it, somebody says, now listen, we don't want to, we don't want to offend anybody, but, uh, you know, they're encouraging people to worship. They want people to, you know, to cry out to God. They want people to give their heart in, uh, to worship in God. And they said, listen, we don't want to offend anybody, but you know, if you, it costs money to put this thing on, you know, and if you could just help us, that'd be great. The only place where your heart actually gets involved with the service, we have made it the least important part of the service because we are scared of somebody somewhere hurling an accusation or lumping us in with somebody. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Somebody, when you got baptized, you took your wallet out, you should have left it in. Listen. God doesn't need your money. You need to give it because it has a hold on you. And the fact that right now the, the religious hairs on the back of your neck are standing up is proof that the spirit of mammon has a hold on you. I said I'm not taking up an offering. I might just to make religion mad. Look at your neighbor and say, he, he does make religion mad from time to time. <laughs> the offering. The offering. The place where we take the representation of our lives. Don't tell me that your lifted hand and your dance represents your life. You didn't do that for five minutes outside the four walls of this church. But there is something you spent 40 hours, 50 hours, 60 hours doing outside the four walls of this church. And that's heaping treasure unto yourself so that you can get a new iPhone. It's the only thing you really care about, and it's the only thing you don't want me to talk about. So when I get an inkling that somebody doesn't want me to talk about something, I'll go, I'll go three months without talking, receiving an offering or talking about money, and, and I, I don't know this, but there'll be someone watching or someone will tune in online, and it's the first time they've tuned in in three months. And I'll be talking about an offering. And so he, that's all he talks about. No, that's all the Holy Ghost wants you to hear. So he orchestrates the service. Because the only time we get a chance to talk to you is when Easter poinsettias or, or Easter, Christmas poinsettias or Easter lilies are decorating the foyer. God wants your money. Why? Because he wants to free you. He wants to liberate you. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you and give you supernatural abundance to fund the end time harvest of souls. God ain't playing with you. Return to me. The returning feast. Return to me and I'll return to you. You ought to be praying for tabernacles for tonight when you gather in this place. What are you going to bring him? What are you going to bring him? Offer unto him. It, it may not be, you know, if you're a part of this house, then certainly, then you bring it and you offer it in this house. If you're not a part of this church, then you bring it somewhere else. You be obedient to the Holy Ghost. 
I'm not trying to. I, I have every, every bill we have <laughs> paid. And if it weren't, you can't supply the need of the vision of this house anyway. You ain't big enough or deep enough in the pockets. You know what I'm saying? The vision for this house is massive. We just went and looked at a property that's going to cost four hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars just for the land. Four hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars. Now, if you want to help sow into that, how about our tabernacle offering tonight goes to sowing into that to build a house for God? We're going to build a terminal where prophetic voices can converge to equip the end-time army of believers for the last great awakening. That's what we're going to build. We're going to build a training center and a studio where the prophetic voices of the world can come and converge together. How about it? How about we do it in the middle of nowhere? 456 thousand dollars. You spell 400 F O U R H U. You spell thousand T H O U S A. You spell million M I L L I O N. Father, I believe you now for our first million dollar donation. I believe you for it. The land is going to cost 450 something thousand dollars. The property one point, the building 1.5 to 2 million dollars. But we believe right now for the first million dollar donation in the name of Jesus to break the back of the spirit of the age in this generation and to release the prophetic voices of God. No, if it was your million dollars, you'd be praying. I mean, you'd be praying. You'd be like, you'd be receiving that word. I dare you to receive it right now. And then I receive. I'm not going to believe for $450,000. I believe for a million dollars. Ah! Build your house, God. Build your house, God. We'll glorify you in it. We won't touch a penny of it. We won't touch a penny of it. Lord, let no man receive glory. Let no man be naturally benefited. Let your kingdom be built. In the name of Jesus. Return to me, God says, and I'll return to you. Isaiah 55 and verse number six is where we have this interesting passage of Scripture. And get ready for the Lord to move. I'm telling you, get ready for the Lord to move. At any minute now, on anybody. Watching online, we're standing in faith with you. Hallelujah. Stoney says, if you build it, they will come. Whoo. Yeah. Verse 6, hear the command of the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Hmm. What an interesting passage. Well, I thought God was everywhere all the time. Yeah, but sometimes he's somewhere more than he is others. Seek the Lord while the sun is fixed in its position, but there are times when it's hotter. Why? Because we are closer. It is nearer than it has been. Seek the Lord. What was Jesus' condemnation for the people of Jerusalem? It was this. They knew not the hour of their... They were completely unaware of it. You see this condemnation not only in the ministry of Jesus, but you see it on the day of Pentecost when fire and wind descend into that upper room. 150 people gathered there, begin to speak in other tongues and declare the wonderful works of God. 3,000 were saved on that day, and yet there were thousands more who heard it and who mocked when they heard it. And we often think that when a move of God is taking place and when the Spirit of God is moving, well, we'll know it and we'll feel it and we'll understand it and we'll recognize it. 
present it. I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. I don't know. The, the praise team just didn't seem to be on it today. And, and why don't they have the words up there at the right time? And why isn't that? Why is the preacher so loud? And I don't know. I don't get it. It didn't take all that. And you are exactly the one who is going to miss the hour of your visitation. This has nothing to do with feeling. This has nothing to do with you can see, sense, hear, or experience. This has to do a faith-filled apprehension of the knowledge that God is in our midst. And it may look like a carpenter. It may look like some drunkard staggering out of an upper room. Can you discern, can you sense the moment of your visitation? And the secret of this here, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near, can be found in this statement right here. We must sync our calendar with his. He is not, he does not operate on the Gregorian calendar. The Gregorian calendar, which is based on the sun. God has a calendar that is the lunar calendar. It is based on the movement of the moon. <laughs> the sun, you can look up at it all day. Doesn't seem you can't see any changes. But the moon, constantly in flux, constantly changing, moving. And we go to see what God is doing. Moedim, an appointment scheduled for an encounter, which is cause for celebration. They knew not the hour of their visitation. Do you have the amplified version right there? Huh? Genesis 1, yeah. Genesis 1, 14. Here's what it says. Then God said, let there be light bearers, sun, moon, and stars, in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night. Let them be, be useful signs, tokens of God's provident care and for making season, days, and years. So the sun, the moon, and the stars, its purpose, yes, season, days, years, but what he mentions before that is a sign of his provident care, covenant. Let them look up into the heavens and let them have a revelation of covenant. I remember interviewing Marilyn Hickey, if you haven't seen that interview, and we were talking about the signs in the heavens. The astrological signs have been, have been kidnapped by the world and used as, demonic, as you know, demonic stuff when originally they were stories of the redemptive plan of God. Whether it's Leo the lion, which is the lion of the tribe of Judah, doesn't matter. All of it, the purpose of it is to reveal God's provident care, his covenant with his people. And during these scheduled times and during these scheduled seasons, we're supposed to open the door to see that provident care. More than 800 times in Scripture, God speaks of the importance of times and seasons. Depending on the font size in your Bible, that's every page. God says something about signs and seasons. Signs, seasons. We must have the Issacharian anointing to discern the signs and the seasons. What is God doing right now? What is he doing right now? What is he saying right now? You need to know that the spirit of mammon, this is the season to break the power of the spirit of mammon. And there was a warning that was given to all deliverance ministries. Get ready because you're about to enter into a level of warfare you are not accustomed to. Because when you get to mammon, that's a whole nother level of demon. But God is anointing you to break the spirit of poverty off of the lives of men and women. Hallelujah. You gotta, you gotta discern the times and the seasons. If you do not discern the times and the seasons, you won't know where you're supposed to be. You won't know what you're supposed to be doing. Joel chapter two. Quickly turn there. Joel two. Any opportunity to pray in the Holy Ghost, to magnify his name, apprehend it. Passover. 
you open the door and you discover he's a deliverer. Huh? Unleavened bread, he stands at the door and knocks and declares that he is holy. He is the pure sacrifice to be buried in the earth. You open the door and you get the revelation. First fruits, you find out he is risen. <laughs> Nobody excited about that? <laughs> Pentecost. You'll see the lights of the menorah in the revelation of the feast of God. There are three feast seasons. There are seven feasts. The first three is Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits. And then you have the tallest one in the middle. That's Pentecost. When God invaded the earth again. Pentecost is a season all of its own. And then you get into the fall feast of God. The latter three. Rosh Hashanah. Yom Kippur, Tabernacles. So you see the seven-pronged golden candlestick, the light of the revelation that we are to open the door to. The first three, we open the door as a memorial for what it is he has already done. The final three, or the first four, the final three, we open the door for what it is he's about to do. We begin to rehearse what it is God is about to do in our lives. You get to Rosh Hashanah, and you open the door. He stands at the door and knocks, and you open the door, and that is the feast that is called, uh, how, did I, how did I phrase it last Sunday when we gathered together? It is the feast that is called, No Man Knows the Day or the Hour. <laughs> what revelation are we to get in that moment? Jesus could come at any time. No man knows the day or the hour. Then we go into the days of all leading to Yom Kippur and we see the judgment of God. We open the door and we see a revelation that God will reclaim his nation, Israel, and the wicked shall be judged on the earth and sin will be recompensed. But then you get to tabernacles. Tabernacles, they celebrated by celebrating the figure or the picture of what it is when they were in the wilderness, when he supplied for them, and when he provided for them as they dwelt in tents wandering through the wilderness. That tabernacles is a reminder that God wants to visit us in glory. Tabernacles is a reminder that he wants to dwell with us. See, there at tabernacles, they were guided by the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. They were guided day and night by glory. And it's a reminder to get back to the glory. Get away from the rudiments of men. Get away from the wisdom of men and to be guided by the glory of God. Everybody say, guided by glory. Now, as we enter into the season, it's important. I'm, I'm not going to take time to preach this. This was in a, another part of my notes that we don't have time for this morning. But I'll tell you this. 70% of all wars ever fought began either in planning or in the actual declaration of war on August or September. 70% of all wars in human history, August, September. Why? The devil wants to stop visitation. And if he can't stop visitation, he can't stop the revelation of Jesus as Lord. Ah, hallelujah. During the Feast of Tabernacles, the Jewish people would walk around the tabernacle praying, the Messiah will come and save the Gentile nations. The Messiah will come and save the Gentile nations. The Messiah will come and save the Gentile nations. I may mention tonight that they celebrate the water libation ceremony during the last day, the great day of the feast. The priest takes water and he dips it into the pool of Siloam and he takes that water and he goes down by the, tap, by the temple and he pours it into a basin celebrating the water that gushed forth from a rock. How many of you know this? How many of you know this? How many of you this is new information? How many of you don't have any idea what's going on right now? How many of you are enjoying this? Okay. <laughs> I'm going really fast because I just assume everybody knows this. You want me to slow down? Okay. So I'll talk really fast. Moses smote the walk, rock and water flowed for millions of people to drink. They're celebrating that with the water libation ceremony. 
the priests would go. Tens of uh, thousands of people would gather and would celebrate. As he would, are you turning to Joel chapter 2? As he would turn to Joel chapter 2 and read from Joel chapter 2, as he would pour the water out, and everyone would celebrate how the nation was able to drink at that time. They were able to drink the water. This is where Jesus was in the Gospel of John, where the Bible says on the last day, on the great day of the feast, he stood up and declared, If any man thirst, let him come to me, and I'll give him a drink of water, and he will never thirst again. I mean, you think Jesus is all sweet and nice. They're in the middle of a service, one of the most uh, celebrated services of the year, and the priest is pouring out the water, and Jesus interrupts and says, hey, 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 you want some real water? <laughs> Hallelujah. They read from the 27th Psalm. They read from Joel chapter number 2. The Bible says, with joy will they draw water from the wells of salvation. How many of you have heard that verse? That's what they would read as well. With joy shall we draw water from the wells of salvation. It's interesting they're declaring it in the Hebrew and they didn't even know it. What is the word for salvation in Hebrew? Yeshua. With joy will they draw water from the well of Jesus. And on that day in the Gospels, he stands up and says, hey, 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 hey. If any man thirsts, let him come to me. Yeshua, the Lord's salvation, and I'll give him a drink of water, and he'll never thirst again. God says, I want to give you a revelation. Open the door. Open the door. How do we open the door? Hearing. Hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Hearing, uh, hearing. I don't, mean, I don't mean that sound reverberates off of your eardrum and you acknowledge that sound has been received. Hearing means to perceive, to understand, and to unlock what has been said. Everybody say to unlock. unlock. When you hear a thing, you, you, you unlock. Someone has just jabbered some noises. But through your experience, through your knowledge, through your teaching when you were a child learning English, you're able to unlock that gibberish, that sound, the meaning of the sound. Faith comes by hearing, hear, unlocking, taking what you have heard and unlocking it, comprehending it and understanding it and react, acknowledging it. That is, that is the, that, that, that your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. Everybody say acknowledge. So acknowledge, take the word apart, act knowledge, act on the knowledge. You have received, you have unlocked knowledge, and now you act on it. And when you act on it, when you hear, receive, unlock knowledge, and act on it, you open the door, and there's revelation. There he is, and he comes in and sups with you and dines with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. They were praying for rain as they poured that water out. They would pray for rain because they went into the promised land and now they don't have water from a rock. Now they have to depend on the heavens and they would pray for rain during this ceremony, during the Feast of Tabernacles. Send the rain, send the rain, send the former rain, send the latter, latter rain, send the rain. And they didn't know they were praying for the Holy Spirit. As they quoted Joel chapter 2. Here are the blessings of tabernacles that you're about to receive prophetically over your life and we'll begin with verse number 23 of Joel chapter 2 let's begin with verse 28 because it's more fun you're already right there in the vicinity you still praying in the Holy Ghost I feel like we got in spectator mode again you, you ready to minister I might hand you the mic you ready to prophesy you ready to lay hands you ready to have hands laid on you? Joel 2, 28, and it shall come to pass 
afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams, and your young men will see visions, and also upon my servants and upon my handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. Do you know the hour? Do you see it? Do you sense the hour of your visitation? Everybody say there's an outpouring coming. But look, he says, it will come to pass what? Something has to happen first. Verse number 23, and we're going to find the blessings of tabernacles. The blessing that God wants to pour out on you. Verse number 23, be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. Everybody say acceleration. That is planting rain, that is harvesting rain, all coming together at the same time. Verse 24, and your floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Say acceleration. acceleration. Say multiplication. multiplication. These are the blessings of Pentecost or of tabernacles. Of God Almighty. <laughs> Verse number 25, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Everybody say, God allowed it. Why did he allow it? Because you allowed it. Why did he allow it? Because you allowed it. Product of public school. Why did he allow it? Because you allowed it. But that's okay. You see, something happens. I don't know if you felt it over the last year and a half, two years, that when there is a convergence of trouble, it mutates and changes into something else. If it was just the one thing, you could handle it. If it was just the, the two things, you could handle it, or the three. But something happens when they all start happening at the same time. It's as if it melds together to create a different kind of trouble. Locusts aren't grasshoppers. They were grasshoppers. When grasshoppers get together in massive numbers, something happens in, in genetically or on the inside of them. They literally mutate into something else entirely. A completely different creature with different personality, with different appetites. They behave differently because in a mass, they change and mutate into something else that can destroy a nation. When we declared this going into 2021, that there was going to be a release of the locust, of, uh, of the locust but God was going to restore the years of the locust hath eaten, we didn't know that when we entered into 2020 that we would see one of the largest displays and destructions of locusts throughout Africa, throughout the breadbasket there, that had been seen in generations. Hmm? 2020. Oh, yeah. Time has flown. It's time flies when you're not having fun. Have you noticed? How many think time totally changed after 2020? I mean, it's like you can't even calibrate where you are in your life as far as time is concerned. Oh, that was just, you know, six months ago. No, that was three years ago that that happened to you. But the trouble that came in 2021, it mutated into something entirely different. And God said, but even though the enemy was allowed to bring that destruction, and even though it was great, I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. Amen. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palm worm, that is the different cycles of the locust life. I will restore to you the years. Locusts don't eat years. What is he talking about? He's talking about the harvest you could have had. Well, they only ate one. No, no, because from that one would have come another and another and another. From the seed of those seeds that the locust ate, you would have had a hundredfold return. And God said, not just on what the enemy stole, but what could have been accomplished with what the enemy stole, I will restore those years to you. 
I mean, people will look at our children and they'll look at, they'll look at people who are raised in the kingdom of God as kids are here today and they're down at the altar and they're praying and they're believing God. And some of you, you know, you're 60 and you look at them and you say, man, I, I just got in this thing 20 years ago. If I would have, or five years ago or whatever it is, man, if I would have just been raised in it, what could have happened? You ever thought that before? What if I was raised in this thing? You're about to find out because God is going to reach back and restore the years that the locust hath eaten and you're going to be standing right where you could have been standing if you served him your whole life. He is a God of restoration. Everybody say radical restoration. Prodigal's coming home. I'll restore to you the years the locust hath eaten the cankerworm, the caterpillar, the palm worm, my great armor, which I sing among you. Verse 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you and my people will never be ashamed. And you shall know that I am in the midst of you. Two blessings. Number one, wonder. God's going to restore the wonder of it all. I will deal wondrously. What a, what a testimony. How oh, the Lord's been wonderful to me. I will deal wondrously with you. And here it is. You see it? And you shall know that I am in the midst. Oh God, yeah, help us to know right now in the name of Jesus. Help us to sense, help us to know, help us to discern during the season right now as we have gathered in your name. Come on, somebody apprehend this. Somebody unlock this. Some of you have needed this. Sometimes trouble is not hard to go through if you know the Lord's with you. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes sometimes it's just, it gets, it gets but I, I, Lord, I need to know, are, are you with me? He will never leave you. He will never forsake you, but I'm going beyond that now. He's right beside you. He's for you right now. Come on, apprehend that. Wasted time. I know it was your fault. He's still with you. He's still for you. He's making himself known to you right now. Who? Revealed glory. Revealed presence. And he says when you get that apprehension, when you get that revelation of presence... It shall come to pass afterward. You've had, you've had multiplication, acceleration, financial overflow, radical restoration, the restoration of wonder, revealed presence, revealed glory. And as I'm pouring out those things, after that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. Also upon the servants and upon the headmaids will I pour out my spirit. Oh, that's, that's divine revelation knowledge that he pours out. Supernatural flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you. But our Father which is in heaven. This is a tabernacle's blessing. I will pour out revelation knowledge. And then verse 32, and it shall come to pass. Huh. Didn't say you'd get it. Get that phrase, never forget this. It shall come to pass. Meow. Meow. Well, I didn't get it. Well, he didn't say you'd get it. He said it would come to <laughs> I'm going to get it. Or Robert said, there are miracles coming to you and at you every moment of every day, flying by you. 
they're coming to pass you by like Jesus was coming to pass by Bartimaeus. But there are a remnant, a few who are not content for it to just come to pass. They want to apprehend it. They want to lay hold of it. They want it to become a part of their lives and it shall come to pass pass i dare somebody lift their hands and just in your own way say me lord me here lord here now lord now don't pass me by jesus son of david have mercy on me i want acceleration i want multiplication i want financial overflow i want radical restoration i want wonder i want revealed glory i want revelation knowledge it's coming to pass 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 and it shall come that whosoever shall call, 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 call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Supernatural salvation and freedom during tabernacles is available. Receive it. Receive it all right now. Receive it all right now. No, he's releasing something now. I sense it. I sense it. This is not for everybody. This is for a remnant right here. Something is being deposited on the inside of somebody right now. Ooh, hallelujah. Come on, take a moment right there where you are. Take a moment. There it is, there it is. Now, now. Somebody's about to get it, I'm telling you. Pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Reach out, reach out, and touch the Lord. As he goes by, you'll find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment. Every need he will supply. Reach out, reach out, reach out, and touch the Lord as he goes by. You're not waiting on him. He's waiting on you. This is your moment. This is your moment. Come here, Chad. Come here. Come here. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Healings come into your body. Healing's coming to your body. Ah! As he passes by this moment, healing is being released. Ah! (laughs) 
Those watching online, they say that the pain in his shoulder is gone. You've been having pain in your shoulder. Lay your hands on it now in the name of Jesus. Ah, ah, now, 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 now. Come on, come on, receive, apprehend, apprehend in this moment, apprehend in this moment. Pain in the knees, now, now. Be healed, be healed. Come here, Jesse, come here. Come here. Don't, come on, don't stop. This is your moment to receive. Don't become a spectator. How many years did you, did you suffer pain, arthritic pain? From the time I was six till the time I came into church, 22. 22 years. Right? Whatever. <laughs> Alt not this woman. Being a daughter of Abraham. How long did it take to leave your body? Seconds. Seconds. It left her seconds. Has it ever returned? No. She said, no. 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 Arthritis in the name of Jesus. Tendonitis in the name of Jesus. Bow your knee. Yeah, it's happening now. It's happening now. I command, I command cartilage to be restored. Now. 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 Discs be healed. Who? Finances be restored. Now, 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 now. The presence of the Lord is in this place. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Neurological disorders, be healed. Be healed. You receive that, Nina? Nina, lift your hands. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Receive that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody's about to receive a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. Fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. If that's you, if that's you, lift your hands. Lift your hands. If you're in the building, stand up on your feet. If you're, if you're there, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just receive it. Give me some prayers. Give me some seekers up here. Give me some prayers, some seekers. Give me my dream team. Something's happening. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. This is your moment. Don't miss your moment. I'm just making way for you to be able to receive from God. For you to grab a hold of him right now. For you to make a move toward him right now. For you to have a visitation in your personal life right now. This is your moment.
floaters in the eye are dissipating and disappearing now in the name of Jesus. Just wipe your eye and celebrate and watch it go. Watch it go. You've been hurt. Oh, somebody's going to have to apprehend this. Somebody's going to have to, I mean, you're going to have to get on your feet and grab a hold, get on your feet and grab a hold of this. Somebody's been hurt and bitterness has just gripped its hold on you and you need to break free from it. This is your moment right now to break free from it. This is your moment to break free from it right now. This is your moment. Bitterness has to break in the name of Jesus. Receive it and watch it melt away and let the love of God fill your heart and fill your mind. Past trauma, you don't have any idea how past trauma affects the decisions, the ridiculous decisions that you're making in your present. But if you'll right now lift your hands and receive it, God will heal past trauma in Jesus' name. Ooh. It's gone. Bitterness, gone. It's gone. Unforgiveness, gone. 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 Rebellion. You've been rebellious against family. Rebellious against leadership. Rebellious against your parents. Rebellious against church leadership. And that rebellion, you didn't have any idea, is like a shackle around your neck. And it's been dragging you down. But in the name of Jesus, repent, lift your hands, and receive liberty from the effect of that rebellion right now. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. And the venom coursing through your veins as a result of that rebellion will be supernaturally healed right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Give us clean hands. Give us a pure heart, God. Let us not lift our souls toward another. Give me my praise team up here. Y'all do something. Do something different up here. Do something different up here. Something's happening. Something's happening. Watching online, just continue to worship. Just continue to receive right there. Those of you right here, come on, don't wait on anybody. You get in a posture to receive. Get in a posture to receive. There are moments when some things change. Then there are moments when everything changes. This is a moment where everything changes. Come on, just a few more minutes. We're almost done. Just a few more minutes. It's only 12, 13. You'll still beat the Baptist to the buffet. Come on, just a few more minutes. Yeah. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. He's riding on our praises in this place. Come on, he's here. Don't play with it. Let's go. Come on. Let it be so. 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 Let it be
be so. Leukemia, be, so. be healed be in so. Jesus' name. Be, be so. gone out of that child's let body. Let it be so. Come on, let it be so. 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 Forty years of walking in disobedience. Let it be so. Being healed. And the time is being restored, Nina. Now, 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 now. Come on. Let it be so. 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 God's let moving, Alex. So. He's moving in your let life. So. This is your season. Let it be so. Come on, let it be let so. Let it be 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 so, let it be so, let it be so, let it be so, let it be so. Do you feel it? Do you sense it? It's coming to pass. Let it be so. Let it be so, 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 let it be so. The kingdom come, you will be done. All right. Now lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Woo! We're going to sing that again. In fact, we're going to overturn the decrees of the enemy one more time. We're just going to celebrate that it's done. We're going to overturn the decrees of the enemy with an offering in our hands. For those who haven't already brought their offering down, I want you to get your tithes and offerings in your hand. If you give over the phone, then just get your phone in your hand and hold it up before the Lord. If you're going online, go to EncounterToday.com and as you get ready to give it, wait before you hit the send button. Just have it kind of in your hand and just get ready to hit the send button in a moment because in the name of Jesus, when you lay it on the altar, I'm going to have you bring it down here. You're going to declare, I receive visitation as you lay it on. Ooh, I receive visitation in the name of Jesus. Ooh, take a minute. Take a minute. Worship with it. Just hold it up before the Lord. Hold it up before the Lord. And when I say now, you're going to bring it down here and declare, I receive my visitation. I have received my visitation. We're going to overturn the decrees of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of God forever. You can give via PayPal. You can give Bitcoin. You may have some Bitcoin you want to give away. I don't know. You can give that. You can give, I don't know, how all the ways you can give. Your firstborn, I don't know. No, don't do that. Get ready to sow. Get ready to sow. Are you ready with We Overturn? Oh, hallelujah. And I want you to, I mean, be violent about it. Be violent. The enemy, 70% of all wars begin right now in this season. Let the devil know there's nothing he can do to hinder you from getting your visitation. I receive my visitation. Are you ready? Father, bless this offering now in the name of Jesus. 
receive the obedience and the faith behind it as acceptable in your sight. Multiply it, increase it for the impact of the gospel and bring revival through it in the name of Jesus. Are you ready? Bring it now and declare, I receive my visitation. Hit that button now at EncounterToday.com and declare, I receive my visitation. We overturn. Go ahead. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. This is the realm of legislation. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. This is the realm of legislation. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. This is the realm of legislation. Come on, sing it again. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. This is the realm. One more time, shout it! We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. This is the realm of legislation. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. We overturn the decrees of the enemy. This is the realm of legislation. seconds 30 more seconds bless the name of the lord because it's done give me a mark 11 24 praise Lay hands on the shoulders of the people next to you and pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Lay hands on the shoulders of the people next to you and pray in the Holy Ghost. Release something into them. Dream team, go lay hands on people. Move from there and go lay hands on people, dream team. John, go lay hands. Just be led. Caleb, go lay hands as you're led. Go lay hands as you're led. Ashley, go lay hands behind you. Ashley, behind you. Lay hands on, lay hands on her. Y'all, put those mics down, and when I say now, 
I want you to run and go find some young women and lay hands on them for a fresh fire to come on them. Are you ready? Are you ready? Now, 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 now. We ran to heaven with our praise. 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 Lydia, it's no accident you came across this video. God is releasing a new season into your life of visitation and the miraculous. Receive it now. I just heard angels rejoicing with us. Something has broken in the heavenlies. I'm telling you, I hear angels rejoicing. Something has broken through in the heavenlies. I hear spiritual shofars going off as if a new jubilee is being announced. Celebrate! In fact, anybody, men with men, women with women, go lay hands on somebody and pray over them, speak over them. Anybody can go, just go, go, go. We need you to hit that thumbs up button. We need you to hit the share button. God is moving mightily. And we need to spread this message out to as many people as possible to receive their visitation. Thank you for being with us today. We're going to keep prophesying and praying in here. Be sure if you can drive to get here tonight at 6 p.m., something is happening in this place at Encounter Christ Church. Visitation 2021. Go to ncrevival.com tonight. Get here early. It's going to be overflow. Don't miss it. 6 p.m. We'll see you here tonight. God bless.